Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Arts Beat Radio here on 89.5 FM WSKB and Arts Beat TV on Westfield Community Programming Channel 15. I'm your host, Mark Auerbach. Peter Coles is our chief engineer this morning. And today we're going to be talking to two people who have made their mark in music and theater here in the community. Our first guest is Patrick Tobin, who is well known uh, in theaters not only locally, but uh, around the world for his um, tribute concerts and his impersonations of Frank Sinatra. Patrick, good morning and welcome. Good morning, Mark. Thanks for having me. Pat, how did you get interested in Frank Sinatra and in doing his music? Uh, it was friends of mine who actually got me into it. They were younger than I was, and uh, I'd go hang out with them after work, and they were they had a greatest hits CD, and they said, you got to listen to this, and I ended up liking it, borrowed it, started learning the songs in my car, and every time they'd be in the car with me and I was singing, they'd say, you sound a lot like him when you sing. And I'm like, nah, nah, it's a CD here, it's not me. But that's- We're losing, Patrick, just a little bit. Um, I lost the last sentence of what you said. Oh, I said the people would say that it was. It, I sounded like Frank when I would sing in the car with the CD, and then ultimately, um, I said, no, it's the CD you hear, but they insisted, and then that's when I started thinking about doing this for, for a living. Were you, were you doing music before that, or uh, theater, or anything like that, before you got interested in Sinatra? Uh, I grew up uh, taking music lessons, playing instruments, you know, being in the, the school band, jazz band, marching bands, and, and that kind of thing, uh, but nothing where I was singing in front of an audience. I was painfully shy. And that was nothing I was even entertaining at the, t- at the time. <laughs> so when, when you started to do this, was Sinatra your first um, tribute kind of thing, or were you working with other pieces of uh, music and other artists? Uh, well, it was the only thing that, I, that my voice lent itself to, so I never tried to learn anything else as far as doing a tribute show. Um, I know some people do that, because I'll, I'll have people approach me and they go, okay, so you do a Sinatra show, well, who else do you do? Like, what, the Sinatra's not hard enough? <laughs> but uh, that's the only one that I pretty much focus on. I mean, I'll do Michael Buble kind of stuff for Harry Connick, uh, but it's all standards. It's all the same genre of music. Now, where do you perform these days? I mean, prior to the pandemic, uh, were you doing theaters, clubs, combinations of that? I, I was in Florida, actually, when this all hit, and um, I lost probably the last two weeks of my bookings there. Um, and ended up staying until the end of March, and then drove back up here. So um, that's where I was at the time. But I, you know, I, I travel around East Coast um, as far west as Texas, and I still fool around in Europe every now and then as well. So now I know that you've done shows at, with Sinatra as part of the Rat Pack, and then you've done shows uh, Sinatra solo. Um, he's got such a wide repertoire. What are some of the, your favorite? Sinatra songs that if um, that you do or do you let your audience or your producer whoever pick the the song charts well the audience obviously likes to hear the more well-known songs so you know Summer Wind My Way in New York are always in the mix Um, I've been doing this for 25 years now and not that I don't like those songs but I like to throw a few obscure ones in the mix every now and then for my own um entertainment and to keep me from getting too bored with it so uh like right now i do a saloon song which frank was known for singing one for my baby for example was probably his classic rendition uh but i sing one called drinking again which not many people have heard of but i enjoy singing it and another good one is the coffee song which is an old song from the 40s that he would do on his radio show so i throw a couple of those in there just to keep myself entertained um who does the arrangements in the music uh, uh, or do you work with live musicians or do you work with uh, tape or a combo? Uh, well, it depends on the budget, obviously of the client. So I'll do everything from a track show where I perform solo. Uh, then I'll do three piece band and then I do a seven piece band and then I can go all the way up to a 17 piece band. So as far as the orchestras go or the bands, um, I have the arrangements for that. And I've got a few guys, one guy's Sean White, who is pretty well known in the cruise ship circles. Uh, for arranging, and um, uh, Gene, or Sean Evans, I'm sorry, and Gene White out of Las Vegas is the other one who writes all my uh, my music. So how, approximately how many shows do, can you do a year? How many can I do, or how many do I do? How many do you do? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you could do it eight uh, shows a week if you want it. Yeah, 
it's probably about 150 a year, which is more than enough for, for me. I'm, I'm I'm happy with with that number. Uh, do you, are you, that gives this, me a lot of. Is this a full time gig for you, or do you have a day job? Nope, this is it. That's fantastic to be able to have you what you doing what you want to do full time. Yeah, I've been doing it uh, as my sole source of income since 2000, and I started in '96. That is amazing. Um, we, do you return to the same theaters or venues year after year, or do you try new ones? Uh, there are some that I go back to. Uh, you know, ironically enough, as I told you in our email together, that uh, today was uh, my majestic theater show in West Springfield, uh, or supposed to be. So that would have been happening tonight. But uh, you know, so that kind of thing I continue to, to come back to because it's local, and I have a lot of uh, fan base. Which is nice to see when I when I look in an audience and I recognize a lot of the faces. That makes it nice for me as well. Um, you know, in Florida, it's more of the gated community clubhouse kind of shows, and then you do some smaller supper club kind of venues. There are a couple of theaters down there, but those generally um, they get the, the you know the A list uh, musicians that, that go in there, so they don't really look at people like me. But and when I say like me, I'm I'm not saying that, that I'm bottom tier, but you know, I'm not the top. I'm not A-level either, so. Yeah, but you've made a career of it, so you've got to be more than sure. bottom of the tier. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, there's some people that you, you go around and, you know, they stay local. They never move out of their, their locality, and, and, and that's fine, too. There's a niche for, for those kind of singers as well. I'm not I'm not bashing them, but, um, but yeah, the theaters, and then now, who knows? I have no idea if I'm ever going to sing in a theater again. Yeah. Which is sad. Uh, would, you, would you consider doing a Zoom concert, or have you done one at this point? No, I haven't. Um, I've just heard nightmare stories about the sound quality uh, being transmitted and, and all these other things. So I'm sure there's workarounds and, and ways to, to fix that, but um, I'm not savvy enough with that equipment to, to do that. So, um, you know, a good friend of mine, Ray Gilmet, he, he does the Elvis around the area as well. And he's been doing that. He's been doing these live streams two days a week from his home. And now he's been doing it at a, a couple of uh, restaurants um, to kind of plug them as they reopen. And there are places that he sung at before, um, but I, I haven't looked at doing that yet. Now, what what what's your venue of preference? Um, I know that when you perform in a theater, people are coming specifically to see you, and they'll pay attention. Sometimes, if you're performing in a restaurant or a club, you're uh, you know second level of attention after the food or the drink. What works best for you? I love theaters. Um, preferably 200 to 500 seats because I like intimate. I like to be close. And that's another reason I don't really look at the Zoom because I'm not getting that feedback from an audience, which is kind of what makes me want to perform better and, and more. So um, if I'm just singing to a, a camera and nothing is feedbacking as far as if they like it or anything like that, then I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really interested. But, uh, but yeah, the theaters are my favorite. Have you, have you ever considered or have you done any other performing besides Sinatra? Have you done musical theater or other kinds of uh, musical work? Um, I am not a trained actor, but uh, I did get called once for the Ludlow Players. Um, they were putting a show together called the 1940s uh, Radio Hour, and uh, their crooner that they had um, cast for the, for the part couldn't uh, make it, and it was three days before the first show. So I basically had to run in there and learn everything and, and do a dress rehearsal and, and go. But, uh, you know, so I got through it, but I wouldn't say that that's my comfort level to, to do acting. Yeah, I'm sure it's difficult. But um, uh, you've done these tribute shows and these Rat Pack shows, and there's got to be a certain amount of acting that comes along with creating the the uh, Frank Sinatra style. Oh, right? sure. Uh, well, as far as my solo show goes, you know, I do the singing. um uh, one thing that I do that a lot of people like, and Sinatra did it as well, was uh, introduce a song, uh, say who wrote it, who arranged it, um, how it came to be, and how it came to be in its repertoire. So I do like doing that, because people like the history of the songs. Um, and, and Jimmy Mass, for example, is another local entertainer that I do a show with him. He does Dean Martin in a show as like a, a pseudo Rat Pack thing. And that's completely scripted because we have back and forth and banter and we have to work around each other that way without stepping on each other. So the whole thing is scripted. So, yeah, in a sense, we are acting, but I'm still myself when I, when I, when I get down to it. I'm not trying to pretend it to be somebody else when I'm delivering those lines. 
Which era of Sinatra's music appeals to you most? I mean, there was young Frank Sinatra, then there was Frank Sinatra in his middle years, and then later on when people called him the chairman of the board kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he would go out there with uh, and play these huge arenas with Sammy Davis and Liza Minnelli and, and stuff like that. Is there a particular era of his music and his style that you that appeals to you the most? Uh, yeah, I mean, every era, he sounds different. If you listen to him in the 40s, his voice is very soft and almost uh, angelic sounding. And um, then it got a little rougher as he had a vocal hemorrhage and he smoked and drank. So the 50s, well, the early 50s was really my favorite part. That was the capital years, and he was just, um, as Nelson Riddle put it, he had voice to burn, which he just had, he, he sang for long periods of time where he could hold his notes and had breath control and everything else was fantastic. As he got older, you know, he lost some of that around the edges, but there are songs that he, that he sang when he was older that I enjoy the delivery of, so... Uh, there are songs from each era, but the early 50s was definitely my favorite. Now, I mean, as your voice is aging, as you're aging, have you found that you're approaching the the Sinatra music differently as you age? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can't sound like a, a 1940s Frank anymore. You know, he was in his 20s at the time. I'm 52 now, so... Um, but I don't smoke either, so the damage isn't being done in, on that end of things. But, uh, yeah, the, do I feel... Some things being different is when I sing. Um, yeah, my range is still there, but uh, there's definitely some more gravel in, in the throat and that kind of thing as, as you get older. So, Do you practice singing uh, when you're not performing? I mean, do you do vocal uh, techniques or get coached and anything like that? In the shower every day. Okay, so uh, your, shower, <laughs> your shower is a nonstop uh, performance venue, so to speak. It's a great uh, acoustic box, yep. And have you? Do you take voice lessons, or do you get coached? I did when I first started, but but I don't anymore. Uh, you know, I do the exercises on my own, but I don't have somebody there goading me on to do it. Do you read music and uh, play any instruments, or are you just a vocalist? Uh, well, like I said, I did when I was younger. Uh, I did you know read instruments, clarinet, saxophone. I even took some drums. Um, I fool around with the guitar a little bit, but it's nothing I'd want to do in front of an audience today. I hire professionals for that. What made you uh, experiment with music in the first place? Was it school? Did somebody inspire you? I was always drawn to it. I mean, I did things as a kid that most boys didn't. I mean, uh, band was one thing. There were other guys in there. That's no problem. But I took dance lessons, which was, you know, to me, I was drawn more to the music than the dancing. But, yeah, music's kind of been a thread in my life that I've just been drawn to, so... Okay. I enjoy it. we got to take a break here to acknowledge the underwriters that make Arts Beat possible. We're chatting with Patrick Tobin, who's a local singer who's made his career performing the music of Frank Sinatra, both in tribute shows and, and in concert. This is Arts Beat TV and Radio. I'm Mark Auerbach. Peter Coles is our chief engineer. We are broadcasting, as we do every week, from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy. And we'll be right back after we acknowledge the underwriters writers who make this possible. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Barnes and Noble College Bookstore in the Ely Campus Center, offering Westfield State t-shirts, sweatshirts, and gift merchandise, all of your academic needs, and offering textbook materials in new, used, ebook, and rental formats. Available at the bookstore on campus or online at westfieldstate.bncollege.com. Underwriting for Community Radio on WSKB is brought to you in part by Rockies. Over 30 convenient locations throughout Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and Florida. One of the nation's largest ace dealers. Expertise and great product selection in paint. Hardware, lawn and garden. That's Rockies, rock solid service since 1926. On the web at rockies.com. Underwriting support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Greater Westfield Chamber of Commerce, the voice of business for the greater Westfield communities. Informing, educating, advocating, the Chamber provides opportunities for members to make meaningful connections on local, regional, and state levels. For more information on the Chamber's many events, workshops and programs, as well as the benefits of membership, visit westfieldbiz.org. 
The Chamber focuses on the most important economy, yours. Join us every Thursday morning. From 6 until at least 7.30. Check out the Bobby G and Company show. Right here on WSKB 89.5. Community Radio. 89.5 WSKB. Live from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy, this is WCPC Channel 15 and 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. Welcome back to Artspeed, everyone. I'm Mark Auerbach, your host. Our guest this morning is Patrick Tobin, a, a local singer who has made his career uh, performing the music of Frank Sinatra, both in concert and in tribute concerts and all of that. Patrick, if people want to learn more about you or uh, find out how to uh, book you for an event, do you have a website or pl- a place people can go to catch your music? I do, patricktobin.com. That's very simple. Um, I, you said that you were in Florida when the pandemic hit, and uh, mm-hmm. you ended up coming back here. Uh, when do you think you'll be able to resume concertizing? I don't know. Right now, uh, I'm saying that the rest of my year until the end of the year is a wash. Um, nobody's taking calls. Nobody's calling me, so... Uh, you know, there's a couple of little things like house parties that are still in the books that we'll see if that occurs. Um, those aren't until August, but until then, I've got absolutely nothing on, on the books. Uh, have you found so. anything else to do? I mean, I, we've interviewed so many musicians and actors that all they can really do is file for unemployment and hope for the best. Uh, have you had any opportunities to do anything during this time? Uh No. There's been no work whatsoever. So uh, right now I'm at the Cape, enjoying myself. <laughs> well, that's good. You might and, as well be uh, at the beach, right? Yeah. If, uh, if I can't be working, I may as well be somewhere I'd rather be. So, how but, You uh, say you do 150 performances a year. Uh, you're home based in Western Mass. Uh, how do, Is it all one after another, or do you do like weekends and stuff? How does the schedule play out in best and worst uh, scenarios? Well, depending on, on where I happen to be traveling uh, at the time, then I will organize my schedule so everything is around that area so, so I don't have to you know, drive back and forth too, too often. But, uh, and there are some days I do two or three in a day. Um, I prefer not to do those because at my age starts wearing you out pretty quick. But, uh, uh, you know, it just works out that way where if I go to Florida, you know, that's when I, I book. They, they start hiring now. So that's another thing. Like right now. Nobody's even calling for next year in Florida, so it's it's kind of a weird uh, weird place to be. Have you done any TV work or um, you know uh, non live concertizing, or is it all of your stuff live? Uh, I've done a couple of little things where you know interview for say Channel Three in, in Connecticut where they did record me singing a song, um, but nothing where I've done a whole concert um, on TV. For, uh, well, PBS is. I think Channel 57 had done one thing years ago, and that, that's it. Uh, any uh, Sinatra music that you haven't done yet that you're working on, or have you pretty much done most of his repertoire? Well, the, the only thing that I haven't done yet, which I would like, is to have a full orchestra playing with strings, which I've never had the, uh, the, the, the fun to do uh, a show like that. Uh, when when you go out on the road, you said sometimes you do it w- with tape, sometimes with a small ensemble. Do you have a? Are you using Sinatra's arrangements, or are have you had people do arrangements specifically for you? Yeah, you cannot buy the original Sinatra arrangements. Those are just nobody has those except for the family uh, of Frank Sinatra. Um, I think. Um, uh, Frank Jr. was the last one who had those shirts, um, and, that, and but, but as far as the ones I have, they are transcriptions of. So the arranger will listen to an arrangement that I like, and they will write that as closely as possible with the instrumentation that I have. Has anybody from the Sinatra family ever seen you perform? No. That the, the family's not, the, the family's not too keen on uh, on tribute artists and. In my ilk. <laughs> oh, okay. I wasn't sure about that. Well, um, they, they, they don't embrace it like uh, the Elvis estate, for example. Okay, uh, that's fair. Um, what kind of music do you listen to when you're not performing? I love classic rock, uh, 80s music, uh, 
uh, the Henry Mancini channel in Pandora. Um, so that kind of stuff. I'll even I'll even delve into some older country nowadays, which is was not my favorite uh, genre of music, but now I'm coming around to it. So you're driving from venue to venue. Are you? listening to Sinatra in the car and warming up and vocalizing, or are you listening to a range of other things? Uh, I'll do both. I'll, I'll listen to the stuff I like, or I will listen to Frank's songs, and I do warm up in the car, though, on the way, because it takes a good hour to get to where I want to be, and I usually don't have time to do that at the venues, so I'll do that in the car. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know that I warm up my radio voice in the car. And first of all, nobody's listening except for me so I can make mistakes. But it's a great activity to do while you're driving. Oh, sure. And everybody, anybody driving around you that sees you doing it must think you're out of your mind. But, uh, hey, that's my job. It's your job. Do you get a chance to see a lot of other acts while you're working? I mean, do, uh, other people in performance or tours? Oh, sure. Uh you know, especially with um, a lot of the fundraisers that I do, um, I get lumped in with other either local performers or if I'm somewhere else, you know, local to them. And uh, yeah, I, I catch the shows. So, uh, if if you do you, uh, enjoy other art forms besides uh, music, like, do you like theater, film, any of that? Theater, film, I can't say that I even. Uh, you mean like a movie? Yeah, like a, sh- a live show or a movie. Oh, uh, yeah. I love going to Broadway shows. Um, movies are great. Uh, I like going to operas. <laughs> um, I like catching the Nutcracker at Christmas for a ballet. So, yeah. I like I like live performances, uh, regardless of what the genre is. Now, you have you live and work in uh, or your base is Western Massachusetts. Why do you continue to stay here? What uh, attracts you to Western Mass? Well, I grew up here. I mean, I wasn't born here. I was a military uh, kid. Um, and then my father's last station was Westover Air Force Base. And that's where we stayed. And I grew up, went to the whole Chicopee uh, school system. And uh, my father's still uh, with us. He's 88 years old. And that's the main reason why I still stick around, uh, just to keep an eye on him. But um, I don't know. It's home. I mean, my friends are here and and that kind of thing. So that's why I, I continue to, to hang around. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, again, remind people of where they can go to learn more about what you do. Sure. My website is patricktobin.com. And in the website, there is a link to my YouTube channel that will show you videos that I do, uh, some of my work um, on the second page, I think it is, under music. Well, we're going to take a uh, we're going to take a break of art speak, but first of all, Patrick, thanks for joining us. And as we segue into this break, we're going to play some Sinatra as interpreted by Patrick Tobin. Patrick, thanks for being here. Uh, when Thank we, you, Mark. When we come back after a little Patrick Tobin music and underwriting announcements, we'll be talking with community theater uh, actor and singer Christopher Morey. So don't go away. <laughs> i 
of those girls That's why this chick, she's a champ Underwriting is brought to you by Boise Cascade Distribution, providing products and services needed for building material dealers, home improvement centers, and industrial customers. They offer everything from engineered wood and plywood to direct stucking and railing, James Hardy siding, and Adventech subfloor. Located at 33 Fowler Street Extension in Westfield and on the web at bc.com, they are committed to providing quality products, great service, convenience, and value. Support for Community Radio on WSKB is provided by Betts Plumbing and Heating Supply Company, an independent, family-owned wholesaler serving Westfield for over 50 years, specializing in plumbing, heating, and industrial piping supplies. On the web at BettsPlumbing.com or at 14 Coleman Avenue in Westfield. This is Ken Stomsky from Ken's Den on WCPC 15 and 89.5 FM, Tuesdays, 8 to 10. Community Radio, 89.5 WSKB. Live from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy, this is WCPC Channel 15 and 89.5 FM, WSKB Westfield. Welcome back to Artspeed, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Auerbach. Peter Coles is our chief engineer, and we're broadcasting from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy. Uh, join us every Friday at 8 o'clock for Artspeed, and if you miss a segment of it, either on WCPC Channel 15 or 89.5 FM WSKB, we store everything and archive it at Westfield um, Community Programming, or WSKB's Community Radio Channel on YouTube. Our next guest today is Christopher Morey, who's an actor and singer who's done a lot of community theater work at, here in the area, although he has a day job, and it, uh, music and theater are his side gig, so to speak. Welcome, Christopher Morey. Hello there. Thank you for having me. It's good to it's good to chat. I mean, uh, I've got to tell. I mean, we've been friends for a long time, and we go to the theater together a lot. But um, I really never had a chance to hear you interpret a variety of songs until you took on a little project on uh, Facebook earlier uh, this year during the pandemic. Um, it's something that other theater people have done as well. And I guess you picked and interpreted a group of songs according to a formula that somebody put out there. What was it and how did you decide to do it? Sure. So um, I have enjoyed singing in musical theater for almost my entire life as far as I can really remember. Um, what happened with this project was uh, probably similar to many people. All of a sudden, world changed. People were working from home. You were seeing less friends, less events were stopped and, you know, theater stopped. And I had randomly at one time gone on Facebook and a friend of mine was doing a 30 day Broadway song challenge and was doing, posting up a song every day. And there were, uh, and there's all sorts of different 30 day challenges that are, you know, flooding the internet uh, on all sorts of platforms right now because everyone has a different time uh, to pay attention to that type of stuff. Um, so I just happened to screenshot it and looked at it, and I was like, you know, that would be just kind of fun. Like, I wonder what I would pick. Just kind of put it in my mind. I just, you know, screenshotted it with my phone and didn't think much of it. And I was talking with one of my friends from college. I went to Salem State for musical, uh, for, for theater, and I, I was also a music minor. And um, I was talking with her, and she was talking about how uh, she missed singing, and I said, you know, I've, I, I have enjoyed doing community theater, getting back into that type of thing after being away from it for several years in, in the recent history. Uh, I said, you know, let me poke around online, see if I can find something we can sing together with. And I found this app where you could record bits of songs, and then you send it to them, and then they sing at their time live with you in your recorded version. 
so that got that kind of got me spiraling into what I uh, and I kind of talk a little bit about this when I did this project. That kind of spiraled me into some old fun times where I would just kind of sing songs and then also start listening to myself to critique myself. And I <laughs> I got to this point where I was I had a few recordings and I was like, you know what? Maybe it would be fun to sing some songs with people as kind of a an opportunity to, con- to connect during COVID, whether it be virtually or even, uh, you know, artistically reconnect with people that I have either been in shows with me before or people whose voices I've enjoyed singing or just kind of, kind of mix all that in together. So what I did was um, I took the 30 day challenge, which had all sorts of different prompts. So there were 30 prompts, technically one you're supposed to do each day, ranging from uh, a Broadway song with, a name in the title or a Broadway song that reminds you of um, why you like theater, a Broadway song that uh, all these very introspective kind of like prompts. So I decided to make a little project out of it and force myself to kind of put myself out there in a different way than I usually do. (laughs) And um, I just kind of put the project together. I, planned out all of my prompts, I planned out my songs, I got everyone um, that I would like to sing with included in that, Um, and what I did was I designed it where over the course of 30 days in May, I did the challenge of recording it, and then I just posted them all on Facebook June 1st. So I kind of did it a little bit differently because I didn't want the pressure, honestly, of (laughs) figuring something out every day that... That's just not how I operate. So, um, so yeah. So I, I and it gave me an opportunity to really selectively pick things that were in my past. Uh, selectively pick things that um, I have enjoyed from musical theater, and just kind of put it all together in one artistic piece. And uh, I recorded these little prompts. Begin. Uh, uh, not prompts. More so introductions to each song, explaining a little bit about why I chose that one if I was singing with someone, why I was singing with them, and then kind of what the show meant to me or what I knew about the show or just just kind of some different things in my past. It was also an opportunity for people that didn't know my musical theater world and mind to kind of get a glimpse into that. Number 21, a song from a... So uh, in doing this, how did you get the orchestrations behind you and the music? Where Was that part of this app or did you have to... Yeah. It was. So um, what I did was I kind of listed out all of my songs and I probably picked about, I'd say maybe 35 to 40 of them, like kind of picked out what I wanted, looked through to see what they had for um, background instrumentals, essentially. And it's a, it's a pretty popular uh, singing app, not necessarily just for musical theater. I think a lot of it actually is just general music songs, whether it be pop music, country, uh, all sorts of music. Uh, these backtracks are on this app. Um, and so I downloaded the app and I kind of searched for the songs and, uh, there are a lot of different versions, so you could kind of tinker around and I don't know this for a fact, but what I've gathered just from using the app, the app, it seems like people as well can create their instrumentals and upload them to the app. So I think there's a whole other world out there of people who are like to like, at, I've, I've also played the piano before, so I can kind of relate to this just on a probably lesser level, but people that would be out there that would like to make every single track and then post it up for someone. So they, you know, they sit at their keyboard and they do a strings track and they do a uh, piano track and then they do you know, maybe drums and, and all that stuff. So I think people have made some tracks that maybe just weren't provided by the app itself. So yeah, I just used that, found... Um, and what was nice about that too was actually... Uh, it kind of opened up the ability for me to do some songs where they may be more traditionally done by a female character, but I liked the show or maybe liked what the song had to say. And people had made arrangements in male voice uh, ranges. So did they? Um, uh, that was actually nice. Were you able to find it in your key? Uh, does the app? Can you say I sing in the key of E, and the app give you that instrumentation in your key? You you. It's not not to the point where you can like pick the song and then adjust that in the key, but they have uh, when you search for it in the search results, you'll see uh, people will post like 
you know, this song in the key of F or this song in the key of G flat or whatever uh, that is. So you can kind of pick it from that. So yeah, that, that is how, how that is available, but it's not that um, you can pick the song and then adjust the key after that. Okay. So we got to backtrack here a little bit. Um, <laughs> what got you interested in theater and in performing in the first place? So I, I don't, I don't really even know where I can't, I can't pinpoint. I wish I had like this, like that was the moment that I was interested in, in all sorts of things. I just have always liked music. I know growing up, um, I would say I was in a fairly, um, fairly music heavy family in terms of like, uh, there was always a piano in, my, in the house. My dad played piano. Um, his, his mother played piano. Um, it just kind of was like, in the family, like that was just there. So that kind of just got me starting to play piano, honestly, by ear. And then I think as I just got older and was starting to be more exposed to different music stuff that was out there, um, my dad, I remember him telling me one time, I think it was like, I think he was watching old Groucho Marx movies. And he said that I would always ask him to fast forward. I think it was Groucho Marx. I would ask him to fast forward to the musical numbers. So I always had an interest, I guess, in in the music portions of whether it be a variety show or maybe musical theater type thing. So I just remember we start, I want, I remember one time when I was a kid, I won tickets on the radio to see um, uh, the King and I, and that was probably the first show that I saw. And from there, I just started liking mu- like that kind of opened my eyes to musical theater. And then I uh, just kind of did it from there. What was your um, first show, and what's what has been your most recent show that you've done? The first show that I did was probably my freshman year of high school, um, when finally there was, uh, yeah, I mean, the junior high had like some like musical performances and stuff, but like mostly the first show would be Godspell, um, and I was one of the uh, one of the pro- uh, not prophets on the. Uh, Oh, goodness. Anyway, uh, I was in Godspell my freshman year of high school, and that just kind of kicked it off. I continued it through high school, college. Uh, and then the most recent thing I did was uh, over at Exit 7 in Ludlow. Um, I did Adam's Family, and I was a member of the company uh, there. And uh, that, was a, that was a ball. That was a, a great show. And I was actually looking to maybe start getting back into doing something as, as it's been maybe about two years now. And then all of this happened, so this kind of also was another reason why it was fun to be creative was because I was looking forward to doing another show soon. What What are some of the performances that you've done that have been most memorable to you? Um, goodness, let's see. Probably for me the most memorable, uh, and I think it was just because it, it, it touched upon a few different things. So for me... Um, I think when I played Joseph and Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dreams, it was probably one of the more memorable roles that I did. That was a show that um, back when Donny Osmond was in the tour, and this was, let's see, 93, maybe 94, 1994, um, my junior high chorus auditioned to be in the chorus when it uh, was arriving in Boston. So they would tour and the show has a a chorus of children that are in it. And so rather than tour with children, they would get local children. Um, And so my grandmother was a huge Donny Osmond fan. So she's, she actually is, is where I heard the show from first. And then, uh, then we auditioned for it, which got her all excited because her grandson was, you know, auditioning for that. And so then we went up to see it. And then years later, my high school did an alumni show and uh, I was already out of high school and I came back and did that with other alumni as well as uh, local children. And that was just a fun, fun show for many reasons because I had all that history with it as well as just working with the kids in the show was really fun because I remember being excited to do, you know, any type of musical theater or do shows. And then you look up to the older kids. And so just to know that that was what was happening, I'm sure for some students, uh, was just a real, real blast. And we just had a fun, fun time in, in the summer. Do you have a wish list of roles that you'd like to do, given the opportunity? Oh, of course. <laughs> I mean, no. Uh, yeah, I think, I think 
when I was younger, I probably would have been more adamant for that type of thing. Um, now, I've really enjoyed doing shows where sometimes you don't have as much of the responsibility of all the music numbers, and you can kind of enjoy the camaraderie of the cast a little bit more. Um, so that's been fun. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, jobs aside and everything, sure, it would, be a, it would be a ball to do all sorts of roles. A lot of the roles that I would love to do were some of the, the songs that I did in, um, in, in this challenge. Some of the roles that I, some of the songs rather that I did are roles that I would never be able to do, whether it be just because of uh, what the actual role calls for or uh, just the, 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 the way in, in which that role would be cast or my age or even my gender. So um, I would love to do West Side Story, uh, Tony and West Side Story, but I'm not a huge dancer. So that would be a fun role. Uh, you know, if they ever did something local, Dear Evan Hansen would be great. Um, but I'm now more of a father role age, I think, for community theater. So that's been an interesting adjustment. But, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people that uh, like musical theater and, and do it would have, have their list of dream roles. I think we all do, any of us that have right. done theater in any way. Um, at least when you got to do the 30-day challenge, you could sing songs that – weren't written like you sang the song uh, unusual way from the musical nine that was written for a woman to sing but it's one of the most beautiful songs and i've heard guys sing it in concert but they'd never be able to do that role on the stage Correct. um and things like exactly. that but uh, i think we all have our little list of dream roles that we would do uh, if whether we were age appropriate or gender appropriate or not um has there been any shows that you've seen in the last few years uh live that have really had an impact on you oh uh, let's see in the last few years um i you, i used to get out to the theater a lot more. Well, I lived in New York City, so when I lived in New York City, I was, I would go as as often as I could if I could afford it and it could fit into my schedule. Um, I would say probably one of the more recent ones that I just thought was, I had kind of heard a lot of the the hype about it. I didn't. I'm very. I'm sometimes strange with things that are, are popular. I get very suspicious of it. So like when Hamilton came out, I. Everybody was in, uh, all about it, and I said, you know, I'm just going to let it let it be. I don't need to jump on this wagon. And I kind of gave the, the, the soundtrack a listen to, and I wasn't anything all that blown away by it. To me, it sounded, in some respects, a lot like In the Heights, which I loved, uh, which was another musical previous to uh, Hamilton written by Lin-Manuel Miranda. And because I liked In the Heights so much, I just thought that it, it, was, it sounded very similar to that. So I kind of just let it go, and then... Um, Two years ago, went to see it, and I that probably affected me. That was one of the I got back into that obsessive musical mode where you go, okay, I need to listen to the soundtrack. This is uh, that was a really great show. So that's probably the most recent one. Um, there's been other ones that have been you know kind of like fun and and funny that I was probably more surprised. I, I totally enjoyed myself at SpongeBob the Musical, which I didn't anticipate that I was going yeah, to have. Yeah, that was fun. I, I love the SpongeBob musical and I didn't want to go see it. I mean, it was on my <laughs> review list. It was something I had been told I needed to review. And I mean I thought, well, I'm not gonna hate it. it it's not gonna be two hours of my life I can never get back. But I thought it was one of the most fun things. And when I wrote the review, I was chastising myself for having um, thought that I would hate it. Uh, and it, I absolutely adored it on every conceivable level. And when it came to writing the end of the year um, recap of the best of uh, 2019, it was high up there on my list of favorite touring shows. I was shocked. Yeah, it was uh, you know, another one, too, that I saw probably just around the same time as Hamilton was Moulin Rouge, which then moved. I saw it in Boston that that then moved to New York City and was not open long before COVID uh, closed down all the theaters and brought in uh, well, theaters in general. Um, that was a fantastic show. And I was uh, pleasantly surprised by that one. Um, and that one's one I'm telling people when you when it opens back up, get a ticket for that. That one was 
fantastic. Well, yeah, it's on my wish list uh, only because, I mean, I like the movie and I like the music uh, of it, but I understand that in New York, when it sat down to play a long run in one theater, that the entire theater is part of the scenery and it's been redesigned. And it's apparently one of the most opulent theater experiences anybody can have. So that's high on my wish list. Yeah, I would imagine. I mean, they did probably not as much in Boston, but it was almost exactly what you described. So I can only imagine if they're moving to New York for a long run, what else they would do to kind of wrap the, put you in the Moulin Rouge, like you're attending uh, that almost. Yeah, it was, the set was spectacular. Yeah, um, and it that's, there have been no Tony Awards this year. Those were postponed. So there's really been no way to give it the accolades that it deserves. But in right. some of the other theater awards, like the Drama Desk and the Drama Critic Circle, that did uh, give awards this year for a shortened season, it got all kinds of uh, awards for uh, its technical aspects, its scenic and costume design, its choreography. So I, I think that when it reopens, and it will be one of those shows that will reopen uh, because of the interest in it, uh, it's well worth a trip to New York. Mm-hmm. We got to take a fast break here, Christopher, to talk uh, to acknowledge the underwriters that make community programming possible here on Westfield's Community Programming Channel 15 and 89.5 FM WSKB. We'll be back with Christopher Morey after these messages. Underwriting for community radio is provided by the YMCA of Greater Westfield. Every day, the YMCA strengthens the community through programs and services focused on youth development healthy living, and social responsibility. For all the WISE many programs and services, visit us on the web at www.westfieldymca.org. The YMCA, 67 Court Street in downtown Westfield. We're more than a gym. We're a cause. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Westfield Bank. For more than 160 years, Westfield Bank has been an important community presence and commercial leader in the Pioneer Valley. With convenient full banking services in Westfield, West Springfield, East Longmeadow, Agawam, Feeding Hills, Springfield, Southwick, as well as Enfield and Granby, Connecticut, visit us on the web at westfieldbank.org. Hi, this is Harry Rock, host of Rock on Westfield every fourth Wednesday at 8 a.m. Tune in for my view of this place I call home. Community Radio. 89.5 WSKB. Live from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy, this is WCPC Channel 15 at 89.5 FM, WSKB Westfield. Welcome back to Artspeed, everyone. I'm Mark Auerbach. Peter Coles is our chief engineer today. We're chatting with Christopher Morey, who's a locally based actor and singer. And um, Chris, what's on your wish list of shows you'd like to see when theaters reopen? Uh, so me and my friend, uh, who I went to college with, as well as, uh, was my roommate in New York, uh, we both love everything West Side Story, and they had a revival of it, uh, that had just, I don't even know if it opened, I believe so, but I definitely know it had previews previous to the shutdown, um, and so that would be probably on my list, uh, of one of the first things that I'd like to get back to uh, to New York and see, I've I've heard lots of great things about come uh, come from away, and I've uh, would like to see that. I think that's touring soon, so that would probably be on my list if that comes in the area. Uh, I haven't seen Dear Evan Hansen yet, and that's probably the one that this project has kind of made me more interested in. Uh, I have, I've obviously um, heard a couple of the songs just from um, you know the Tony Awards or whether it be just popular uh, songs from the show that um, have been just out there. So I've heard a few of the songs, but this project, one of my friends in singing this told me to, uh, about a different song that's a duet that I should learn so we could sing it together. Uh, so her and I have done this on the app, but it opened my eyes to some other songs in the show that I didn't really listen to. And so I've now listened to the soundtrack. So I'm kind of 
that's one that would be on my list that uh, I've heard great things about and not yet seen. So, um, I mean, I would see anything. I, <laughs> but those are probably some of the, the first ones that I would. Put yeah, money I mean, dear Evan Hansen was supposed to be at the Bushnell. Uh, in May. And mm-hmm. I know that they canceled their Broadway season. Uh, I don't believe their Broadway season will launch until December of next year. But uh, I know that it will eventually wend its way back to the Bushnell down the road, but it's a big hit in New York. Um, yep. And uh, I love, the, I, I don't know much about it other than having heard some of the music. I, uh, not from the Tony Awards and from the original cast recording, but there are a couple of songs from it that are absolutely moving. And, and you actually (laughs) recorded one, which we'll end today's program with, but, um, I, I really like it. Uh, what are you watching on TV since we have no live theater to go to these days? (laughs) What theater things have you uh, discovered on television during the, while you're, sheltering in place well i actually i'm fortunate enough that as it's been getting nicer out i actually have not been doing too much of the television um i was i would wake up and and see the news in the morning and then you know the evening time television but we kind of sit outside in the evening time so i haven't really filled any of the musical theater stuff in with with stuff that would be found on television. I probably should utilize, I would imagine there's got to be stuff like on Netflix um, or other streaming avenues that I could find some things. Um, What I've actually been doing was uh, I've been listening to just other people sing things throughout this app. So I ended up, because I was doing this project, it was to pay for the full services of the app. You could do something like $10 a week or $40 for an entire year. So I actually did the $40. I put that investment towards this. I said, you know, I enjoy singing. I would spend, you know, $20 on a dinner, maybe a $6 drink and, you know, a $10 appetizer. Why am I concerned about $40 for enjoying something that I do for the entire year? So uh, I've actually been listening to that. And I have found that some of my friends that I knew are also on the app. So I've kind of been to get my so-called musical theater fix. uh, I've watched some of my other friends is 30 days uh, challenge. So I've been doing that and I've been kind of poking around on the app and, and there's some really great talent out there that these people are just enjoying in, in their bedrooms or living rooms or wherever they're singing from. So the, that's the, kind of what I've been, been doing. The 30 days of music that we recorded, I, I mean, I saw it on Facebook, but is it out there uh, in the general internet world if somebody wanted to go see or hear some of your stuff? I don't have that like that. Um, one of the comments that one of the one of the people said was that I should put these all on on a YouTube channel, which I guess would be something that would probably be more like what you're you're talking about. I guess you'd have to have Facebook in order to get to it. I did make the album completely wide open, so it's not like you have to be my friend in order to see it. So I would imagine if you have a link to it, that would be fine. Um, but maybe I'll put some time and put it up into a YouTube channel. So right now, the only way would be through facebook and then um if you have the the small app then what i what i did was i just made all of the songs that i had done the recordings of those because i pulled them from that uh i just made them not private as, as of june 1st so they're available like on that so people can kind of find you on uh facebook and get it there that's terrific yep. um you think you'll do another 30 songs at some point um you said that there there were duets that you wanted to do with other people. Uh, do you think you'll go back and do another set? Uh, I If I did something, it would maybe be something that would have different prompts because I really put a lot of time into being specific with what I selected, why I selected it, and, and with who. Uh, unfortunately, not everyone uh, got... When I say got back to me, I don't mean it like I'm upset by it. Everybody has busy lives, and and I anyone that was able to sing with me on this was, you know, I was just happy to be able to do that. Um, so there's really no bad feelings with that. Um, but yes, for sure, uh, I would like to be able to find ways to sing with some of the people that um, were from my musical theater past that maybe didn't make it into the by the deadline, you know, to get that all edited and and posted up together. 
Um, I would con- I would consider a thirty day another thirty day type challenge. Um, it would probably have to be something a little bit different, you know. So maybe it would be like thirty days of uh, different Broadway prompts, or you know, maybe I would even challenge myself and sing something else other than show tunes. That's that was. Or, or of course, we could do a duet together, and yes. people would say Christopher Maury <laughs> singing with somebody that sounds like a smoke detector. You know? <laughs> Oh, I doubt that. <laughs> yeah, I, I when as I was watching or watching and listening to some of the music that you chose, I thought, well, I would sure love to do that, but uh, I haven't sung in so long uh, because once I got into radio, I used my voice differently than I would if mm-hmm. I were singing, and I also realized that a lot of the songs that I want to do, I have no reason for explaining. You you did, before each song, you explained <laughs> why you chose that song, what it meant to you at that point in your life, or what inspired you. I don't have that thing. I mean, there's just songs that I like, and I'd have to, I, I drive myself crazy coming up with the backstory of why I wanted to sing them. <laughs> Well, some, I mean, some of them, what I tried to do was mix a pick between a song that I've done, actually done in a show, a song from a show that I've done, but I didn't do the actual song, or songs that I would want to do from shows. So I kind of started with that baseline, and then from there, so I already had an initial kind of backstory just by having one of those three things, and then from there... Uh, I would, you know, kind of look into it and I really just, those prompts I did all kind of in one, one take. And I just said, okay, time to talk about that, sh- that show and this song and what that means to you. Um, and that was actually really fun to do too, because it gave me an opportunity to kind of look back into either that role or that, that moment or when I heard that song first. So you could probably find something that would attach to any of the songs. It's just, you know, some of the some of my introductions, as you probably know, had a lot more depth to them, and then some others were just. I just like this song. This was one that I picked. It's easy. Like, uh, I could go on and on about how I enjoy West Side Story and and you know all of that, and I gave a little bit of some detail to that that show. But essentially, I picked Maria because one of the prompts was a name of a song a song with a person's name in the title, and that's you can't get any more name title than that yeah that's true are you one of those people that hears a piece of music or a song and can remember when you first heard it um i i just realized the other day or the other week i guess i heard a song on the radio that brought me back to my 10th grade first dance in high school it it was a song that was popular at the time and i can mm-hmm. remember hearing it and it's a song that i haven't thought about in years and years do you as a musical theater person does that ever happen to you you know i do, it's it's really interesting to do this for me to have done this at this point in my life being a little bit you know older i'm 37 um more mature and just kind of when I first listened to, I will answer your question. I'm getting around to it. <laughs> when, when I first listened to musical theater stuff, I listened to it for the sound of it. And I enjoy, that's what, that was what drew me in. I, I loved when music sounded good. I loved when voices sounded good. I loved when voices harmonized. Like that to me was what drew me and pulled me into it. And then I discovered this whole other world of, well, there's lyrics behind songs. They're telling a story now, you know? So, so that was kind of that journey for me. So, for me, I do have some very strong moments where when you hear something good that made me think of that song, I am, I'm almost pulled back into it where I'm, I can, I can you know, sense where I was with that and, and why. Because, it was, because it, for me, I guess it's a, it's a very visceral connection. Like The way that musical theater sounds to me is, is my first love of it. And what this project really really awakened me to was the storytelling in the song. And I would find that as I mentioned this in my intro video, I have one introduction video about the project and then I have an intro video before each song. In my intro video, I mentioned how um, a lot of times I would, because I'm very particular, a lot of times I would do a couple takes of the songs and because I would want to get it, you know, right. And I, even something so simple and small to me, 
that probably someone wouldn't hear, I can hear it. But I would find that when I'd go back and listen to them and go to actually pick which take I would do, the first one typically was the one I liked best, leaving it alone. You know, when I walked away from it, and rather than being overly particular, because I was probably emoting the song a lot better and a lot differently than I was later on when I was doing it for the sound. So that was kind of an interesting thing that I got from this project. Um, but yeah, it was easy to pull back into the moments where I had first heard a lot of those songs because for me, that's that an initial sound that, that, that is what I like about it. You know, Christopher, we're out of time, but I hope at some point down the road, we get to record a song together and I can I think always, be great. Oh, as I'm driving home uh, from the studio here, I'll probably make a list of, we'll have to do 60 songs uh, okay. and all that. But thanks we'll for, double the challenge. Okay, thanks for joining us today. We're going to leave Artsbeat with Christopher Morey's interpretation of a song from Dear Evan Hansen called Waving Through a Window, which is probably the one song from this musical that's the most well-known outside of the original cast recording. Other artists have covered it. It was sung by Ben Platt in the musical, and uh, we leave you today with that. Peter Coles has been our chief engineer. We've been broadcasting from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy. I'm Mark Auerbach, and we'll see you next Friday at 8 a.m. for another edition of Arts Beat TV and radio on Westfield Community Programming Channel 15 or 89.5 FM WSKB. Have a great weekend. I've learned to slam on the brake Before I even turn the key Before I make the mistake Before I lead with the worst of me Give them no reason to stare No slipping up if you slip away So I've got nothing to share No, I've got nothing to say Step out, step out of the sun If you keep getting burned Step out, step out of the sun Because you've learned Because you've learned Always looking in Will I ever be more than I've always been Cause I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass I'm waving through a window I try to speak but nobody can hear So I wait around for an answer to appear While I'm watch, watch, watching people pass I'm waving through a window Can anybody see is anybody waving back at me? We start with stars in our eyes We start believing that we belong But every sun doesn't rise And no one tells you where you went wrong Step out, step out of the sun If you keep getting burned Step out, step out of the sun Because you've learned, because you've learned On the outside, always looking in Will I ever be more than I've always been? Cause I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass I'm waving through a window I try to speak, but nobody can hear So I wait around for an answer to appear While I'm watch, watch, watching people pass I'm waving Can anybody see? Is anybody waving? When you've fallen in a forest and there's nobody around, do you ever really crash or even make a sound? When you've fallen in a forest and there's nobody around, do you ever really crash or even make a sound? When you've fallen in a forest and there's nobody around, do you ever really crash or even make a sound? When you've fallen in a forest and there's nobody around, do you ever really crash or even make a sound? Did I even make a sound? Did I even make a sound? It's like I never made a sound. Will I ever make a sound? On the outside, always looking in.